Well, as I surge through AliExpress, as I do on a regular basis, I keep coming across some really cool looking watches. And today I'm gonna to share with you 10 that are currently on my AliExpress wish list. Hello, you're watching James. My name is James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches, and I'm talking about 10 watches on my AliExpress wish list that are currently there at the moment because they get me rather excited, and there's a couple here that I really would like to purchase. But as always with these wish list videos, none of these have actually made it to my house yet, so I can't specifically recommend them to you, but I can certainly bring your attention to them because there may be watches that you've never seen before that you may be interested in. And if you happen to be interested in them and want to buy one for yourself, well, Firstly, when it arrives, let me know what it is like because I am truly interested in these watches. But before you press that buy now button, please consider using one of those affiliate links that I'm gonna be putting in the description of this particular video. But let's jump into these 10 watches that I really wanna draw your attention to. Now you'll see that I've put US dollars this time. This is just to make it a little bit easier for me, just to make it a little bit more international when it comes to prices. And this one here is a Seacost coming in blue and black. And if you're aware of this sort of design, you'll probably know that it looks a lot like a Mont Blanc. I think it's the Geosphere. Looks a little bit different to the Geosphere, especially with the movements just uh, choice in here. It's not an exact homage of it, but I think it is actually quite a rather interesting looking watch and certainly a lot cheaper than the Mont Blanc. This one being 127 US dollars. Got sapphire crystal as well. 10 uh, 100 meters of water resistance an automatic or mechanical watch as i do always like has a 42 millimeter case diameter it's a bit of a thick one though 15 millimeters 20 millimeter strap width which is what we are wanting does it tell you what movement is inside this one i'm not 100 percent sure but what i can say is i do quite like the look of this one and in particular i do like this blue variation it does look a little bit different Secondly is this Proxima, I guess it's the watermelon and it's caused a few comments online about this one because they are technically I guess homaging a micro brand which I get why people are a little bit upset by that but when you look at this one it's the colours that are being homaged. There's actually not that much else going on with this one that is completely looking like that studio underdog that I guess this one really is taking very heavily inspiration from. But yes, let's put that colour way aside in regards to the homage part of it and just, just have a look at how nice this watch looks and there's a couple of different variations as well. I think it looks cool and it's certainly a much more affordable 199.99 US dollars. It does contain the ST1902 mechanical movement as well, which is always nice to have one of those in the collection. But overall, let's have a quick look at it. 39 millimeter lug or a case diameter, which is nice. 47.5 lug to lug. Oh yeah, there's some measurements that I particularly like as well. Movement side, as we saw before, was that uh, nice looking uh, chronograph movement. Just a very cool looking watch. Yes, taking heavy inspiration, but let's put that aside for the moment because not all of us are gonna buy that original watch. And those ones aren't always available to us either. So this is nice just to have this slight alternative that has a bit of a feel of that Studio Underdog watch. Now check this one out. This to me looks a bit like a Moza or a sort of that sort of inspiration with this kind of dial, beautiful blue dial. 200 US dollars, comes in a bunch of different colors as well, which I think looks quite cool in the black. I think there's a brown as well. Oh, there's a different style of case as well, but it's this blue one that really does stand out to me. That's a beautiful looking doll. I like the look of the hands, the needle second hand there. And check out how that date is integrated down at the six o'clock. It looks like there's a bit of a step down there and look at the size of it as well. I think that's pretty cool. Let's just look at a couple of other pictures of this one. Because, it, yeah, oh, even the case back looks cool. Look at the sort of uh, bridge there across the valance wheel there. I think that looks really cool. Really cool looking movement. Now, let's have a look at what sort of uh, movement is inside there. Does it tell us? It's a caliber A4610. Who knows what that is? But it's a high beat movement with 80 hours of power reserve. And it's a 40 millimeter case diameter. Very, uh, oh, there's a picture of a dude. Let's see some more pictures of this one. Because, oh, there we go. There's the watch on there. Yeah, I, I like that. Not sure if I like how they've written 80 hours power reserve on the dial. I don't think it needed that. And of course, that brand name is probably not the best, but let's put that aside because that's a cool looking movement. I really like that. And I really like how the bridge there goes across that. I, oh yeah, I, I'm quite interested in this one. I obviously not am a, not a huge fan of the, the wording on the dial, but let's put that aside for 200 US dollars, that beautiful blue. It is 
something that has really captured my attention. I'd be a little bit surprised that somebody else out there in the internet world is not rather interested in this one too. Let's go for something a little bit more affordable now, 75 US dollars, and we're talking about a Bernie. I do like Bernie watches, and in particular, this is a good affordable titanium watch. Really nice dial, has a very bit of a sin look to it, or a zin look to it. Bit of a loom on the dial there, as you can see, but titanium. If you're interested in getting a, a titanium at an affordable price on your wrist, this one could be the one for you, and it probably has a, a full loom dial there if you want that choice. Let's have a quick look at the size of this one and the specifications. I'll click that one down. Sapphire crystal, a 37 millimeter case a diameter, which I'm actually wearing my King Seiko today for this one, and that's a 37 too. And although it's slightly on the smaller side, I've actually been quite enjoying it. So a 37 millimeter in the uh, collection may be worthwhile. This one is a quartz, making it a little bit more affordable, but I just think having a titanium watch, even though titanium is not my favorite material for a watch, but when you then consider it at this sort of price, then it becomes a little bit more viable for me and a, a bit of an interesting choice. Probably one of the ones I'm most excited about on the list today is this C Stern GMT. It's obviously very, very heavily inspired by a Grand Seiko, but it's only $224 versus a lot more for the Grand Seiko. And it comes in a whole heap of different dial colors as well, which is quite exciting for me because I really like the choice that you have available here. This is the more traditional sort of colorway, which I do like, but I'm also a fan of this silver, and this burgundy also looks quite good. It contains the Seiko NH34 GMT movement, which is good to see. Almost 40 millimeter case, a little bit smaller, which is quite nice. Only 13 mil thick with a GMT movement. That's actually not too bad. Sapphire crystal, I guess, or it says without the sapphire crystal, it's 10 millimeters. So I'm not sure how chunky that sapphire crystal is and 100 meters of water resistance. And going with the GS sort of configuration, it has 19 millimeter lugs, which I think suits this style because it's obviously trying to look like another watch, this one. It's not really pretending to be something unique, but for a lot of people, that original watch is going to be outside the price bracket. And to be honest, I've tried on that original a couple of times and it's really nice, but I'm not sure if it's the right watch for me if I was going to spend that sort of money. There are other watches at that higher price range that I'd probably pick over this original watch, which is why it's so nice to have a homage of watch that I'm interested in, but will never buy the original. Now, I have owned a Serge's Bronze Pilot before, which looked very similar to this, has the similar case to this, but I bought it with the chronograph feature and it made it rather expensive, which is why when I saw this one, the time only at 190 US dollars, I was a little bit excited because the quality of that Serge's Bronze Pilot that I owned was absolutely outstanding. Honestly, if you even slightly like the look of this one, you slightly like the idea of this one, you should seriously consider it because it's very, very nicely made. I absolutely love that Bronze Pilot I have. This one's featuring a ST130 movement, which is a Seagull automatic movement. But let's go down to some specifications because it's not a tiny watch, it's a 42 millimeter 13 millimeters thick, has a bit of weight to it, 106 grams, 200 meters of water resistance, and it's in bronze. Oh, trust, trust me, this is a really nice watch. The chronograph I had was absolutely outstanding. It is slightly bigger, but it does have some downturn on those lugs, so it really does fit nicely, and it's such a cool looking watch. I really definitely would recommend this to anybody who even slightly thinks this looks kind of cool. Sticking with C-Stern, we're now looking at this very much. It's a bit of a non-moss uh, homage, and they've updated, say, now automatic on the dial. I know they had an earlier version, which everybody was talking about, saying that that's not okay, so I'm glad they updated this one. And yes, this is very much looking like another watch, but I guess that's what we are getting on AliExpress a lot of the time, and it still grabs my attention, which is why I'm bringing it to your attention too, because it is only 119 US dollars, which is really nice. It contains a Seagull 1701 movement and it's nice and thin, this one. Let's have a look at some of these details on here because he had 9.5 millimeters thin, only 60 grams, 38 millimeter case diameter. Yeah, I just, yeah. When you get a watch like this, this sort of beautiful looking watch, even though it's not original, obviously, but having that nice thin case thickness or the width of that watch or the thinness of this watch, the height of this watch, yeah, it feels something rather special on wrist, and it's nice to be able to get it at a relatively affordable price. Now, this Moon Phase, this Aventurine style dial is very popular at the moment, and this very much looks like a new Christopher Ward to me, but obviously this is not a Christopher Ward. This is a probably homage watch by Age Locker, which is probably not my favorite uh, name for a watch, but overall, putting that aside, 
what a beautiful looking watch and there's quite a few different variations as well colors of cases uh, different strap options but check that out I know it's not a cheap watch it's 569 US dollars so a lot of people are gonna go wow that's a huge amount of money but just look at it look at that moon there look at the hands what a beautiful looking watch and let's check out the movement what I oh, get back to that movement stay on that mover there you go that same movement from that other watch that we we're looking at it looks very similar very nice looking movement looking down at some of the specifications let's flick down view more 40 millimeter beautiful comes with a caliber a4610 i have no idea what that is i'm always a little bit mindful of that it is the 640 d2 moon phase 50 meters of water resistance yeah 80 hours of power reserve oh, oh, to be honest i'm just interested to see what this one would actually look like in real life because it does look very pretty not specifically cheap i am very aware but as with all these videos that I make about push list videos, they're not always to say, hey, this watch is fantastic, go out there and buy it. It's more about bringing people's attention to them because, hey, I saw this and I went, wow, that's so cool. Even though I'm probably not going to buy it because of the price, I think some of you guys are going to have the same reaction. Go, wow, that's so cool. But yeah, maybe not buy it myself. But yeah, wow, that's so cool. And I thought, yeah, that's so cool about this San Martin. And I do like San Martin. And it is a 37mm BB54 homage San Martin you can't go too wrong with and only 235 US dollars that's a reasonable price you get this one in the blue as well as the original sort of black and gilt look a lot of people are liking this size at the moment this is a 37 millimeter as I mentioned again wearing my King Seiko in this size because I knew I had a couple of 37 millimeters on this particular list and it's certainly one that's worth considering because the original obviously costs a lot more money than this particular one let's look at a couple more things it's the sn0138g 200 meters of water resistance 45.5 millimeter low to low so this is going to fit a lot of people a couple of year warranty 37 millimeters but let's jump to the last one because this is a rather interesting looking watch i understand people are going to go what is that and that's exactly the reaction i had which is exactly why i put it onto my wish list this is a bernie and this is a monster of a bernie automatic and 99 us dollars Lots of different color variations again this is not one that i'm probably going to buy but it certainly captured my attention and i do like sharing watches that capture my attention that red that looks very different Ooh, let's click on that one all the different color variations let's see the size of this one because i'm actually quite interested and have a little bit of more look into the details of one it's the am 135 m 100 meters of water resistance uh, automatic does it say what it is they probably not going to say what it is oh there we go it's this seiko nh35 that's actually pretty good you know it is a bit of an interesting looking watch but a seiko nh35 powered automatic watch for 99 us dollars that's not a bad price for me i love those seiko movements i think they're fantastic and when you get them around this price it's it's pretty hard to beat guys thank you so much for watching there's some really interesting watches that i really wanted to bring to your attention some that i'm very keen to buy myself some that just really interested me and i hope they interested you too and i hope to see you in another video but while you wait for those next videos that i'll be releasing maybe check these videos out next